Watershed by Opeth is their ninth overall studio album. And a really, you know, different album than most of, um, of their records in their discography. Um, because this is a, well actually Wikipedia says technical death metal album. With of course uh, blended in with uh, with progressive rock that was later really uh, cemented in their um, in their signature sound with the three most recent records. Uh, this is requested by Rockdo and he requested some more Opet albums and I'm gonna do a band uh, together with Opet because um, I I really like that band. Uh, you probably already know it, but uh, we will get to that uh, a bit later. Uh, so this is a really really unique album to say the least because um, Yeah, actually, you know the technical death metal uh, thing um, I wouldn't really call it that because another side says uh, progressive metal just in general N no uh, no death metal but sure um, And I believe another side says goth metal so um, yeah, everybody is describing this album differently because it is such a weird sounding album. Um, yeah, and the album is overall, I believe, 55 minutes long. Uh, so it, it is actually the shortest Opet song uh, or the shortest Opet album um, to this day. Or actually uh, from, from their heavy metal side, from the metal albums, this is their shortest one. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend it, you know, I wouldn't recommend uh, you checking out this album if you're not into Opeth. Actually, Robert the Reader um, has asked me which album is, you know, the best one to get into first if you're new to Opeth, if you're into rock. Uh, the three most recent ones and Damnation, which are rock. And if you're into metal, then Blackwater Park or Ghost Referees is the, is the way to go. Um, and Watershed, you know, it came three years after Ghost Referees, and this was also the album that, um, you know, was the losing, the losing streak, or it broke up the original or the classic lineup, so to speak. Uh, Martin Mendes on, uh, well, no, 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 Martin Mendes was still in the band, he still is to this day, he's the uh, bass player. Michael Eckerfeld is still in the band, uh, you know, the mastermind of the band. Uh, but Martin Lopez, the drummer, and Peter Lindgren, the uh, also one of the original members of the band, uh, who was who, who was on the debut record Orchid. Uh, well, he he isn't original because Opet has no original members, but uh, but he was there from the beginning, so I consider him original. So fuck off. Um, but. Uh, but yeah, Peter Lindgren uh, left because he was tired of touring and uh, Martin Lopez left because he uh, got too, too much anxiety attacks. He, 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 he was just done with, uh, with all the touring. Uh, a bit similar to Peter Lindgren, he was a bit done with, uh, with the popular thing, you know, getting a lot of success with the band. He couldn't take it uh, together with his, um, with his mental, well mental, uh, his... Uh, his disease, so to speak, you know, the, the attacks, the mental mental attacks that he gets. I'm not sure if that is a thing, but he got a lot of, uh, you know, things on his head, so he left the band. Um, and now we got Martin Axelrod, who is the, the drummer of the band, and we got Frederick Eckerson, who is the, uh, the, the guitar player. The lead, uh, the lead guitars or the rhythm guitars, something like that, together with uh, Michael Eckerfeld. Uh, we only have seven songs on there. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about them briefly here. Uh, we have Coil, which is just a, a little uh, acoustic opening. It isn't really something special. Um, I do like the the female vocals on there by I believe the uh, the wife of Martin Axelrod, the the drummer, the new drummer of the band. So I do like this this uh, this opening song. It is really uh, melodic. It is really uh, relaxing to hear um, and it really sets you on the on the wrong foot here because you think uh, this is going to be a, a prog rock album or something like that it sounds really uh, peaceful and melodic and just harmful uh, just unharmful and then we get hair apparent which is probably the the weirdest song on there 
Um, I do like the song. It, it is a great song actually, but it is just so weird, man. It's... Um, um, yeah, we have a lot of, you know, different tempo changes on there. Uh, the song is uh, progressive rock, then it goes to technical death metal, like Wikipedia says, but I... Uh, but I would actually, you know, remain into uh, progressive death metal, because that is, that is what Opet really is known for. Um, so yeah, this is a great track as well. Um, probably the most difficult one to get into, or one of the most difficult ones. Still a great song, but yeah, it is, it is just really weird. Uh, the Lotus Eater is actually one of my favorites as well. Uh, also 8 minutes and 48 seconds. So uh, Opet had a little bit of fun there with you know the track listing and stuff like that. Uh, the Lotus Eater starts off really slowly with uh, with Michael Eckerfeld humming the song. The mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He, uh, he does that at the beginning. Um, it sounds really creepy and weird. But it works in a way. And then we get you know the, the technical death metal drumming from... Um, from Martin Axelrod at the beginning, and then we get and then we get the Death Girls from uh, Michael Eckerfeld. So this song is probably this is probably the most. Am I gonna say this the most bi uh, bipolar song that uh, that is on here because it um, it is in a in in a kind of way you know a really um, acoustic and relaxing, and the other and you know the next second it is technical death metal. So. Uh, this song is really, really diverse. Uh, I especially like, you know, when it gets really creepy and atmospherical at the uh, midway section, and we get a keyboard, we get a keyboard section from uh, Per Weberg. Um, so yeah, this is a great song. It is really diverse. I uh, love it, and um, yeah, it is. A, it is a great third song. And then we get to the fourth song, the centerpiece of the record, and it is uh, Burden, seven minutes and forty-one seconds long. And this is my. Um, Arguably one of my favorite Opet songs of all time, if not my favorite. And you know, it is such, uh, yeah, as many of you guys know, Opet is one of my favorite bands of all time. Probably, probably my favorite band of all time. And Burden is arguably my favorite song of all time. So, uh, this song is really personal to me. Uh, maybe, um, well, yeah, but um, yeah, this song is just a lot of feelings to me it is really personal uh, to me at least um, I just really love the song um, I just really love that uh, we get that piano section at the beginning that is beautiful the vocals are beautiful the keyboard solo towards the middle is perfect it is flawless it is uh, just an airgasm man I just really love the the soloing on here with the keyboards uh, just the vocals man again um, when Michael Eckerfeld uh, has his high pitch, you know, when he uh, does his uh, range, when he has his range, you know, on the record, on Burden, it is just phenomenal. Uh, I can talk about the song all day, I can listen to it all day, you know. Um, I keep repeating the song, but it's, you know, it, it is just over in three minutes or something, and the song is almost eight minutes long, so, yeah. <laughs> It, it is just a phenomenal song, it's one of my favorites of all time and I love it man, love it, perfect, 11 out of 10 masterpiece. Uh, Porcelain Heart is the, uh, the fifth song and this is actually written by Michael Eckerfeld and Frederick Eckson. Uh, this song is 7 minutes and 59 seconds long and this is probably the most commercial sounding song of the record. Um, it starts really, um, it, it starts in a kind of progressive metal way like you're uh, used like your um, no, well, what is the word I'm looking for? Uh, like your used by Opet. Uh, they're really, you know, progressive metal style with a uh, kind of unique and melodic um, uh, beat or, well, beat, uh, riff to it, you know. Um, I really love, you know, when it gets acoustic and Michael Eckerfeld sings really creepy on the song. And when the solo kicks in, man, when Martin Axelrod goes crazy on his drums, man, that is great to hear. When, yeah, when he just goes overboard, when you get to that part, man, oh my god, just, just hold on tight because the drumming by him is just phenomenal. It is crazy. Um, yeah, this is a really great song. A lot of melody. I really love uh, the music video as well uh, from Burden as, Burden as well. Um, yeah, this is arguably. 
the best album with the best music videos. You know, Burden is really beautiful, really mysterious. It is filmed in, I believe, in uh, a, a mansion or something like that. So, oh, but it's fucking balling, son. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're fucking balling. Uh, but, but with all seriousness, uh, you know, a porcelain art is a bit of the same thing. And a bit of a uh, left mansion, I believe, and a, a haunted mansion. Um, yeah, and you know the woman making uh, the women making out in that music video, top fucking notch, Michael Eckerfeld, love it. You, yeah, you just gotta love it, man. Uh, the music videos are great, arguably the best ones uh, out of their career. I hope they make more video videos like that because they they were great. Uh, yeah, it's just a great song, man. If you really you know want to get into the record, then I recommend uh, getting into Porcelain Heart first because it is the most uh, catchy, accessible song of the record. And Hashim, Hashim, <coughs> fucking hell, voice crack. Uh, Hashim Peel is probably the the most difficult song to get into because it is also 11 minutes long, at 24 seconds. So it is the longest song of the record. It is really diverse again, like uh, the Lotus Eater. Uh, yeah, the song just shows a lot of diversity uh, by a really mature band. Um, yeah, probably you know if you want to know what Opeth is all about and uh, what they're going through, you know, then Hashim Peel is probably the most perfect song to explain that. It is just a really phenomenal song. Um, yeah, and this this song is also you know the longest, so it has a, a lot to prove, you know. Um, but but in that time span, it really just shows, you know, it really shows that that it just delivers, and it it just really does. It is yeah the most difficult to get into, like I said, really weird after the most accessible song, but. But, but but believe me guys it is really you know a um just a great song overall uh arguably one of their best together with burden of course um and then we get hex omega which is the the short song well after coil but i um but i wouldn't really consider that a song and hex omega is um is a bit commercial and a bit uh really weird and creepy uh you know combined so um, yeah, Hex Omega is probably, you know, the most perfect song to represent this album, you know, it is a really creepy and catchy song like the album really is, uh, really is. Um, yeah, and overall, you know, the, the song is really, uh, yeah, like I said, you know, catchy, it has a lot of uh, breakdowns, a lot of catchy hooks. Um, and it really just closed out the, the album perfect, it works a bit like an ending credit, it's not a song, but, uh, well... Kind of, kind of like ending credits from Damna Damnation. Um, yeah, I just really, you know, enjoyed the song. Uh, it is definitely, definitely one of the weakest songs together with Hair uh, Apparent. Um, in my opinion, though, I, I think those are the weakest songs together with Coil. But you know, those three songs are still really great, arguably perfect, and uh, the other four songs that I didn't mention, all masterpieces, man. I all love them. So overall, you know, Watershed is a really special album. It was really a watershed for their career because they had a lot of um, a lot of change here. They really just became the the most acclaimed band at the time, you know, with uh, with the the nine records which they had. And I and I think you know um, if they did stop at nine records, you know, after Watershed, they just completely stopped or something like that. They never made heritage which is my least favorite over the record still a great record but it is my least favorite um i th i think actually if they did stop after that record then they uh, could have been perfect then they maybe would have been my favorite band of all time and <laughs> they're, they're actually my second favorite so go figure but uh but but still you know uh watershed is still really you know big watershed in their career really special album and i'm still gonna give it a 10 <coughs> i'm still gonna give it a 10 because uh you know when you think of great records when you think of flawless records you um um yeah i i, I say this multiple times but <coughs> i yeah i i say this multiple times you know but um when 
when you think of a perfect record, you really um, want all the songs to be flawless. And in a way, they they all are. You know, you have high and uh, high points and weak points on this record. But still, you know, everything is really consistent. I still love every song of it, and I actually think it is uh, flawless. So. Yeah, it is a 10 by me, but guys, let me know what you think about the uh, the Watershed record by Opa. Do you think it is a mess? Do you think it is uh, a flawless record? Do you think it is one of their best records, actually? Underrated? Something like that. I actually think it is the most underrated record, but there we are. Hope you've enjoyed this album review. Let me know what you think about Watershed. Let me know what you think about Opa in general, because uh, I really love them. One of my favorites. Um, one of my favorite bands of all time, so there we go. Hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about the watershed and take care.